You know, this this uh, this weekend was kind of interesting because I uh, uh, Saturday I drove up to to see my son play, and uh, uh, you just kind of go into a neutral gym in our own state, and the amount of people that came up uh, to be complimentary of how hard our guys are playing were incredible. Um, and then I hustled back to make sure I got back to a high school game because I had to recruit later at night. And uh, same thing, uh, the amount of people. Uh, I did some recruiting last week, so this kind of went on every gym I walked into, the amount of people that, that just kind of come over and they're unbelievably supportive, uh, uh, you know, was was uh, uh, was was good for me because – it's like raising our own kids. Kind of, we see the warts because we're around it every single day. But it's good to see the, the views of others that they respect how hard our kids are working. And then, what made it interesting that's not the interesting part, that's the normal part is uh, yesterday I had some free time. I worked, I, I, I tried to stomach the dolphins as long as I could. And, um, and then I went back to work. And then, about seven o'clock at night, I just disengaged from working. So, uh, my wife was watching her favorite TV channel this time of year, which is that uh, Christmas movie channel. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, so it's it's on my house like at 6 a.m., at 8 p.m., and Sunday, Monday, don't matter. That's the only thing that's on TV right now. So I, I try to be like a good husband and sit next to her like I'm trying to pay attention to the movie. And for whatever reason, I, decided, I said, you know what, because I knew Emily was running the, the, the little thing today for – you know, uh, contest for what suit to wear. So I said, let me let me get on on Twitter and kind of look at my mentions to see if anyone has anything to say about that. Uh, and then I started reading some of the stuff these people that no one knows who they are and claim to be Gamecocks are saying about our team on social media. I'm glad I don't read that garbage. Holy cow! Um, uh, I. Like I've told you guys before, I rarely go on social media to read unless I'm in a good mood. Uh, uh, someone's lying, whether it's the fans that approach me in person or the people that hide behind uh, iPads and iPhones or whatever else to put stuff under uh, fake names. Uh, someone's lying. I don't know who it is, but uh, uh, I'm glad the people that I speak with face-to-face are as complimentary about our guys as, as uh, I think they should be because uh, our guys, we, we push our guys pretty hard and they're not running away from it. And uh, uh, I'm excited for, for who our team is and the growth that we've uh, had over the last three weeks or so. Frank, uh, Michigan was giving up like 52 a game. You guys scored 78. Do you see any similarities between them, their defense and Virginia's defense considering they're pretty close together in terms of national rank? Um, uh, they're similar with their personnel. They play differently defensively. Michigan's a lot more aggressive in denials and, and uh, uh, off the ball with how they cover. Michigan actually uh, – I don't want to say they're similar, but they got a, a similar, like, kind of the same mindset that we had when we had an upperclassman team, and 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 how uh, consistent we were with our coverages and and guys getting where they belong and strength and things like that. Virginia is a little different. Virginia, similar personnel, big guards, long. Uh, um, you know, when they play, um, Jacate, Salt, and uh, God, I. I'm so bad with names. Um, Turner, is it? Hunter. Hunter. When they play them, and then they got Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy, they got unbelievable length at all five spots. And uh, they pressure the ball, but then they basically dare you, like, drive the ball. Go ahead, try. And they just they, – they, they got great hands, and they don't foul like Michigan. Um, it's uh, – but we got to stop saying that that they don't foul stuff because, and the officials believe it, you know, and then they don't call fouls. But, uh, but no, they're they're real good. They're 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 good. They they got different styles, but very similar personnel. 
Coach, um, you mentioned the social media promotion about pinstripes or, or plaid. Which do you prefer out of the two? And will you look forward to more fans deciding what you wear? Um, I, I like – I mean, you guys have been covering me. I like wearing all kinds of different stuff to games. I, I've kind of, the last couple of years, I've, I've kind of started to use a sport coat combination with different slacks more than I used to earlier. Um, um, my gut is usually my wife's decision the morning of the game. Um, that's the one I usually prefer, and that's the truth. I... Uh, 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 you, the only times I kind of dress myself is if she's out of town, and then I got to dress myself, and I usually get a text message that I see after the game, criticizing everything I got on. So I, I, uh, um, I kind of like that sport coat deal a little bit. Not just that outfit, but the the, the sport coat slack kind of combination. And uh, I've seen Izzo and and Tom down in Georgia. Uh, and they both told me they're done with the ties. They're going tieless. I, uh, the way I've been sweating at these games lately, I think I need to go tieless too because it's not that I ruined the tie or the shirt. I'm going to sweat through it regardless. It's trying to undo that knot when it's soaking wet. That's, that's a problem. That's, that gets complicated. Frank, when you have a number of guys, freshmen, who are going through the college experience for the first time and they go through that first exam break, Mm -hmm. how, how much more of a challenge is it, uh, especially if you want to use that time to get better or just to maintain any momentum you may have going into the break? Yeah, I, I, you know, Rick, they, they go through a college semester for the first time. They, they start the, the, the – I mean, my son's going through it. Um, you know, it's, uh, I don't care what they're exposed to. It's the first time they go through it. And, and all of a sudden their days for the first time in their life – it's unbelievably competitive from the second they wake up to the second they go to bed every single day. So academically, it's competitive. Uh, the, the amount of time that we make them commit to tutor. See, that there's this phallus out there that they spend too much time in athletics. The hours that they spend academically compared to the hours they spend athletically, it's not even close. Uh, the amount of time that they put in between class, tutors, one-on-one uh, -on -one academic counseling, all the, the, the stuff that goes in to their academic successes pales in how much time they actually spend athletically uh, per week. And, uh, and then on top of that, then you add how competitive and, 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 and how difficult every single day is between the weight room and the practice court. And they start, not physically, just mentally, start wearing down towards the end of the semester. So... Uh, it's been my experience that once those classes end, they kind of catch their breath a little bit and they become a lot more productive on the basketball court from attacking the workouts, uh, being uh, mentally, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, more relaxed. So they're more, uh, they're less stressed. So it's, it's easier to learn because they got less on their mind. Um, uh, they probably sleep better. And I, I don't say that jokingly. I mean that seriously. Uh, but conversely, because they have so, they got so much uh, time uh, where, you know, I, I don't care how much more time I want to commit to basketball now during the break since we don't have time restrictions, they're going to have a lot of free time in their hands. And so with so many young guys, you, you kind of cross your fingers and hope that they make good decisions at 10 o'clock at night. Um, uh, so we don't have any kind of distractions on our team. I don't think we will, but you never know. We were all 18. You know what we did when we were 18. It's it's kind of the same thing they're going through for the first time in their life. But I'm excited for these next three, four weeks here uh, uh, with no classes and see how much better we can get. Uh, Frank, piggybacking off of Rick's question, just as a team, what's one of the biggest challenges that you face when you guys have such a long layoff like you guys have had this past week? Yeah, I mean – Every coach handles it differently the week. I, I know I couldn't stand finals week when I was in their shoes. It, it was real stressful for me. Uh, I never liked tests. Um, so as a teacher, I, wasn't, I, didn't, I, I never overvalued a test in comparison to daily participation and daily success as a teacher. 
And that came from my style of learning. I wasn't a very good test taker. So I didn't like uh, having going to class every day and doing all the work and all the assignments and all the quizzes and all that stuff. And all of a sudden, my final cost 75% of my grade. I, I never cared for that as a student. Uh, so I'd be stressed out. So I understand that. And uh, whether it's good or bad, the first three or four days of finals, I'm very hands off, very hands off. And then as, the, as they start kind of getting all their finals out of the way, we start re-engaging. Um, so that's kind of the way we handled it. You know, Sunday last week, we didn't do anything. Monday, we didn't do anything. Uh, Tuesday, they lifted just to get a sweat in and did very little stuff on the court. Wednesday, we kind of did a little more. Thursday, a little more. And then Friday, Friday Saturday, uh, practice was pretty good. We, we, we got after it and, and was real competitive. And, and uh, um, uh, I'm trying to create unbelievable peer pressure from within for all of us to do more. Coaches do more. Players do more. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to create um, uh, peer pressure internally uh, to, to get all of us to do a little bit more because that's what needs to, when you need to grow, that's what you got to do. You got to do more, not less. So, and that's our challenge right now. Dave and then Will. Frank, considering that AJ came in a year early, should uh, probably still be in high school right now, have you been impressed or surprised at his uh, amount of maturity that he's already shown these first few games? Yeah, he's been very well prepared as a human being to take on challenges. Uh, that's, that's a credit to his upbringing, obviously, his parents. Uh, uh, the basketball circles that he's been exposed to. Um, uh, he's been very prepared to accept coaching. There's no pouting with him. That's the thing I ex like enjoy the most. I, uh, when you coach him, and when I mean coach him, I mean you correct his mistakes or you try to teach or you challenge him because maybe he's not doing things with the aggression he needs to do. He, there's no pouting. There's no rolling of the eyes. There's no negative body language. There's an excitement. Uh, to do better, and and when you see that as a coach, you, you that tells you that's somebody that's prepared, and 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 it gives you confidence, and you can even put more on his plate. Um, uh, he he's kind of playing a little up and down right now for my liking. Uh, he's got to get better defensively right now. Like all freshmen, he tends to relax a little bit on defense when his man doesn't have the ball, and we're playing some real good teams, so. Uh, anytime you relax, you get exposed, and um, and uh, so so he he's got to grow a little bit defensively, and we got to use these this next three, four, five weeks to uh, to get him and all our freshmen uh, just a little better defensively. I know that when you are early on in the season, you say a lot of things like, "Oh, I don't really care what the score is in certain games and things of that nature." How important would it be just for the confidence of the young guys to get? A positive result in one of these next two. Yeah, I, it's not that I don't care what the score is. I, you know, I, you wouldn't want to spend two minutes with me after the Wyoming game. You probably didn't want to spend two minutes with me on the plane headed back from Michigan. I it just, uh, it's not that I don't care for the score. I just don't dwell on the score. Uh, it's all about the next day, um, and. Uh, um, because if I if I if I come into practice, you know, with, with negative vibes, I got all those young kids. If I come into practice with the vibes of the people on social media, then all them young kids are gonna quit. Because then, you know, they came here because they want people to believe in them, not to hate on them. And if I start that bandwagon of hate, then they're gonna quit. That's not what they came here for. So my my whole um, my whole experience is, is, and I learned this. I wasn't like this when I was young, as a young coach. I come in full of you know what and vinegar every day after a bad day. And but when I had my own children, I realized if my own kids have bad days, other people's kids can have bad days too. So it's my job to make sure I'm prepared to help them every day. And um, um, it, uh, we 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 have to worry about preparing to the best of our abilities to go play Virginia. That's what we did after Wyoming to go play Michigan. That's why we played pretty fairly decent against Michigan. It was one of our better games as far as how we played. Um, uh, somehow, some way, we got to figure out a way 
when we're on the road to not get outscored 28 to 9 from the foul line. That's a problem. You, you can't get outscored. To it. That's, it happened at Providence and it happened at, at Michigan. You can't win on the road and you're being outscored by 20 from the foul line. It just it can't happen. You, you, we have to do something about that on the road. And, you know, but our preparation for Michigan was good. We got to prepare the same way for Virginia. And then go out there and try to play as best as we can. And then the one thing that's been a challenge for this team is when, when, when there's difficult moments during the game, that's where everyone has to stand tall and stand strong. And that's where youth gets in the way sometimes. We, that's the moment that you young guy, what happens to little kids when you punish them and you take their, their game away? They pout. It's just, who, it's just who we are. We don't know any better at that age. Freshmen, when, when the things get difficult, they tend to like, huh. And as soon as they, huh, those older teams punish you for it. And that's, we got to figure out a way to, to eliminate those moments. Uh, but we got to do our best to, to play. Got to play well against Virginia. I mean, it's just like we did going into Michigan. You got to play well or you got no chance because they're that kind of a team. Uh, and then once that's over, go prepare to go play Clemson. And, um, uh, um, you know, I'm excited. I, our guys are, you know, Saturday practice was not great when we started because we had to go early in the morning. It wasn't great. But you know what? 45 minutes in, it got pretty good. And the attention to detail was pretty good. And um, uh, so – uh, I'm one day at a time. That's what you do with young people. That's what I've done to raise my children, and that's what I'm trying to do with these guys. Frank, you just touched on this a little bit back here, but you know, when I asked the guys what the difference was between the first and second half, they said you know some of the freshmen just maybe getting gassed, or you know they're just not used to playing in these big games in the second half. Uh, is there anything else that you see as the main difference between the first and second half performances, or is that really kind of what it comes down to? You talking about the Michigan game? as a whole, even Wyoming. Yeah. I, I think there's something to that. Um, uh, just – you just don't know with fresh – like, take, let's talk Michigan. The kid Poole, he's having an unbelievable year for them. Last year as a freshman, he was up and down. Like, he'd have days where he'd come in and take two real bad shots, get lost defensively, take him out, wouldn't play anymore. You know, but coach had uh, – I can't remember his name, Abdul Rahim – I want to say it was a senior. He had Charles Matthews. It, you know, he had upperclassmen that kept that ship afloat the whole time. And, and so Poole learned. Now, a year later, he's that much better, not because of his talent, because of his consistency. And, and that's what you strive to do with these young guys is, is get them to understand it's a 40-minute game. It's every play. When, when, you know, I, I, was with, I spent time with Mike Peterson the other day, and I was asking him – I'm sorry I'm going on a tangent, but this, I, I have these conversations with people to help me understand to teach. You hear all this about college quarterbacks, when they get to the NFL, um, everything is more complicated, so it's hard to read the defenses. And he was explaining the difference between how you set up in a college game defensively to how you set up defensively in an NFL game. So I'm in that process just so I can understand how people, you know, what, what's the biggest difference. He said to me, Frank, in the NFL, as a linebacker or a defensive back, if you take one bad step, you're done. He didn't say if you make the wrong read. He said if you step with your right and step with your, instead of your left, the quarterback, the receiver, whoever sees it, and you're done. That's kind of what we're battling right now is when we make that one mistake, the teams we've played against are real good. We, seriously, go look at the records of the people we've played against. Wyoming's probably the one game that's a team that that's, I wouldn't put in the same category as everyone else. But we've played some real good teams. And here's the other part. They all got upperclassmen. So they understand how to attack the guy that makes the mistake. And that's – that's our, our challenge right now is to, to not make those little mistakes that, that people are exposing on us. Frank, with this particular matchup uh, in terms of mistakes and being exposed to stuff like that, Virginia is, doesn't let you get out in the open floor a whole mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously your team and the makeup of it has had a lot of success in transition with AJ and Keyshawn around the breaks. Like that. How confident are you in – in that half court game against that length and that defense, because you have to play a lot of those possessions kind of in that in that arena. Yeah, that's going to be the challenge. That's going to be the challenge, and 
And and here's here's where um, where it becomes challenging to prepare for it. Virginia is not going to take bad threes or early threes. They're not. They're going to get layups and fouls early. If they don't get layups and fouls early, then they shoot their threes late. What I mean late is late in the clock. So that means that that clock is going to get wound down to the end. But in between, they keep running offense. They don't hold the ball. They're not stalling. They're not holding the ball. Okay, let's wait till it's that five, set a ball screen, shoot. No, they keep playing. They're just going to take layups or free throws, meaning that they're going to attack the paint early in the clock. They shoot majority. If you lose guy early, he's going to shoot a three. But as long as you cover him, they're not going to force a three until it gets late in the clock. And – so now you're in practice and you're trying to prepare to defend that. And it's hard to get your guys, especially when you got so many freshmen, to understand how to play with that kind of patience offensively. You know, guy, when you tell guys score early, score late, which is our theory, young guys think that means either shoot a three on the first pass or just hold the ball and shoot it at the end of the clock. Score early, score late doesn't mean that. Score late, score early. What we're trying to say is run, attack the rim, Inside out, three, early. If not, keep running offense. That means guys have to cut, screen, move. That allows the ball to move. Keep trying to get layups and free throw opportunities during the clock. Then go shoot that one-on-one -on -one shot late in the clock if need be. Virginia really understands that. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I mean, we, we, uh, uh, we have to be disciplined defensively uh, to, to make sure – that we don't give up those free throw opportunities or layups early in the clock uh, or as the clock is counting down. And then we have to – one thing that we have not done well, which this is my personality and this one really, really does aggravate me, and you can ask the players, I'll tell you I'm not real happy with this, is our inability to rebound the basketball. My team's 11 seasons as a head coach, uh, we've been top 20 in the country rebounding. I, I'm going off the top of my head. I want to say nine of those 11 years. And all of a sudden, this year, it's the worst rebounding team. And it, we're not even putting up a fight on the glass. Like, if you ask me about that, that aggravates me. Uh, I'm not real happy or patient with freshmen about that right now. Um, you know, but we got to fix that. And that's our job. It's our players' job to take ownership in that. And it's our job as coaches to help fix that. But, but that's going to be the challenge in the Virginia game. And, and if they do get it late in the clock, then you better make sure that when they miss those shots late in the clock that you rebound it. Because if not, you're going to guard for another 30 seconds and it's, or 20 seconds, whatever the clock resets to. And, 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 and they're pretty good at converting offensive rebounds. That's one thing they're real good at. Um, uh, so uh, but that's, that's going to be a challenge. And then offensively, you got to make shots against them. They're going to pack the paint. Uh, they're aggressive with their coverages. They dare you to shoot threes early in the clock. Uh, so we got to make sure that we're selective on the ones that we do shoot uh, without being impatient because you have to move their defense uh, so then you can rebound. If not, you got no chance to rebound. Are you all able to play defensively the, the way you want to with, with so many young guys starting, so many new guys? And, and if, if not, does this time out of classes help you get a little bit further in that regard? Yeah, you know, John, that's that's the hardest thing that I have to balance on game day right now is managing the game to where our defensive concepts, which our young guys still don't understand clearly, nor do they understand how hard you have to play or how strong you have to be to be successful with our concepts. Um, um, it, it's, it's like, let me hit rewind for a second. You got to understand those things to play in any defensive concept, but in ours specifically, because we are so aggressive with how we defend, people tend to just put their head down and drive us, and which makes the guy on the ball understand how to guard the ball, and and that's where we're still not where we need to be. So what happens is then guys don't want to foul because every time somebody drives, they think putting their hands on them is okay. That's bad. That's bad basketball. You can't foul there. Uh, but understanding how to have the patience to stay with it uh, as a coach, as our guys are learning and understanding all those things uh, while managing the game to try and win, um, you know, that's, that's, those are the decisions I got to make every single night. Against Michigan, we had some great defensive possessions. 
that ended up as bad because pool jumps up and livers jump up and they make fadeaway threes at the end of the clock. And those are the kind of shots you're trying to force them into. And, and, and you know, uh, but then we had some other possessions that weren't very good. This is what I'll say in defense of our guys. Bad shots and turnovers have been our problem defensively because guys get on the open court and run on us, and then we don't understand because we're so young um, how to communicate well enough yet to survive when people got numbers on us. We don't understand that one yet. Uh, so we have to figure out a way to keep people out of the open court against us. When we can set our defense, we haven't been great, but we've been okay. Uh, we got to keep people out of the open court against us. Chris mentioned earlier today about kind of developing an identity offensively. Do you feel like that's there right now, or with so many freshmen logging so many minutes, is that kind of a wait and see mode for the rest of the season? Yeah, that's that's our challenge right now as a team is to develop any kind of an identity. I don't think we have one on offense or defense. You know, I asked the team that over the weekend. I said, "What do we, we?" So every time we play, what are we good at? They couldn't answer me. I said, "That's my frustration right now, is that there's not something that every time we play we can say." That's what we did. You know, we, we, um, we got we to gotta be better offensively, uh, understanding sp spacing. Everything offensive basketball is all spacing. I don't care how you play. I don't care if you're a post-up team, a dribble handoff team, a ball screen team. Uh, you, know, you know, let's play small ball. Let's play big ball. I don't care how you play. Everything is spacing. If you have bad spacing where you allow one guy to defend two, guys are too good. They don't let you score. Uh, so spacing has to be good, and that's the biggest challenge with freshmen is, is that, you know, they, they're used to playing with the ball in their hand, just let me go, let me go do my thing. And then everyone else is in the wrong place. And you do that against Virginia, just give me the ball, let me do my thing. Virginia's going to score 60, you're going to score 26. You know, it's, it's, uh, uh, you, you have to understand all that. And that's, that's our challenge right now as a team, as a whole is not just on offense, but as a team, we have to find an identity. What, 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 are we, what are we gonna do every single game when we go out there that we can say, that's who we are? Um, you know, for the last, you know, even last year, that team took time, but we took on Frank Booker's personality, you know? And as the year went on, Frank Booker uh, was crazy enough that even if he didn't understand what we did, he had confidence to be willing to go out there and stick his face, like Will likes to say, stick his face in the fan. He didn't care whether it was shooting the ball, taking a charge. Um, you know, he gave us personality. Uh, we're still trying to find personality on this team. It's, it's important that, that we keep pushing and, and eventually uh, create a personality for this team. Yep, 